Buenos dias. Me llamo Mike Herschel. That's, uh, hablo pico espanol. That's it. <laughs> That's all I know. Uh, so, this uh, talk is we're going to talk about Chrome developer tools. And I particularly love developer tools because I like the idea that I can go to any computer that runs Chrome and inspect it and just figuring out what the hell is going on. Like, I think that's super positive. I can do that from my mom's computer, I can do that from my brother's computer, and I can do it from this computer. And it's rapidly changing. And so every time I open up Chrome, it seems like there's something new I learn. So this is me, Mike Herschel, front developer. I work with Sally and, and just kind of follow her lead. Does anybody remember Firebug? So back, be back before browsers had integrated developer tools, um, you, we had Firebug, which was an add-in for Firefox. And it was so cool to be able to hit that little button and select your elements. That was, that was really, really awesome. Prior to that, we had to like go in and do like outline red, two pixels and stuff like that on the elements, and hit refresh, and it was a pain in the ass. So I have this, I, I, this entire session is going to be a demo. And this is, this is pretty funny, Jeff. Watch, guy. It, it doesn't get worse. <laughs> Watch it again. <laughs> So this is going to be my demo right here. I'm going to, I'm going to sit back here, and I'm just going to work through things. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> and I'm, going to, I'm, I'm basically going to um, kind of just go stuff. And if you guys have questions, reach out and an like, ask these questions. So I have some examples and all that crap. So let's just kind of get into it, right? Any questions uh, before I start? You want to know what that uh, awesome song was? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All righty. Developer tools. So I'm going to open up sci-fi.com because that is something I had the pleasure of working on. And I'm just going to I'm going to start through through the basics and kind of move on to more advanced stuff. Who here has used Chrome developer tools in the past? Good, good, good. Who here uses like Firefox, Internet Explorer, F12 developer tools, anything? That's cool too. Um, if you have not used it before, you right click and you just hit inspect somewhere. And it opens up. And I'm going to hit command plus so you guys can actually read what the hell is going on. Um, you can dock it to your left and to your right, or to the, I mean left and to the bottom. If you hold Command Shift D, I do this all the time. Command Shift D is like a little toggle to go back and forth. That's not documented. I had to Google that and I found it. So let's kind of work through starting with the Elements tab. So 90, maybe like about 70% of my time, I'm in here screwing around with the CSS, right? So I hit this little arrow right over here, and I go and I select the element. And I say, you know, someone says, hey, this doesn't have the right font size. So I can, I can scroll through here and I can see, all right, this font size is set right here. So you can edit this stuff directly here. You can hold down the Shift button to toggle up by 10. You can hold down the Alt button to go down in tenths, which is pretty neat. And then you can not hold anything down and just kind of go up and down like that. Um, if you find yourself in a situation where you're trying to figure out, um, I don't know, a property that's not defined right here, you can actually search for that. So you can go to the computed tab right here and you can filter. So I might want to know what the Z index is on this. So I can just type in Z index and I can see right here that it's set to auto. Um, I can also filter and uh, find out where stuff is coming from. So like, say, like, I want to know wh what font this is coming from. This, this has a custom font called Sci-Fi for whatever reason to do it. So I can click, I can expand this, and I can actually see where this comes from right here. So you can see that this is some minified CSS. 
and it's it's ugly, right? So does anyone has anyone ever clicked on these little brackets down here? It's magic. Like it'll make everything nice and pretty. So it does this with JavaScript too. So you can kind of on minify to a certain extent. You know, it doesn't deuglify or anything, but that's that's a pretty nifty uh, thing right there. Um, you can click up here, and you can like this is so. This is the box model right here, right? So you have the margins, your padding, and stuff like that. You can edit this stuff directly right here using this, using exactly what we did before, um, by hitting the up and down arrow button, or you know, I want to type in Mike here or something like that. It doesn't work. Um, let's see what else we have here. Oh, we have um, event listeners. So event listeners are things that are clicked on. So let's see. So this is, I would expect this to have an uh, event listener on it. Oh, well. Let's move on. <laughs> um, what else are we going to look through in here? Um, so a couple of things is that you can come up all the way up here, and if I hold down the Alt button on my keyboard and click here to expand it, it expands all the child elements. So this is that's pretty useful if you want to kind of you know see see what's going on. So once again, that's hold, holding down the Alt button and expanding it. You can also hit uh, Command F and search. So I can I can search for whatever in here. I don't know, sci-fi, sure. So uh, that's useful for finding classes. Um, if you have an element, let's let me expand everything again. Hold down Alt, expand. So say if I have an element. There you go. Let's scroll down here. Let me just way down to the bottom. I can actually right click on it and bring it into the screen. Man, I want to bring up this. So there we go. So that let me grab it. Um, so I can right click on an element and I can say scroll into view. I don't know if you guys can see that text right there. And it'll actually scroll the web page down um, and show you where it is. Because sometimes you might have an element, and I don't know why this is working here. It might be a hidden element or something. Let's try this one, scroll into view. Well, you should imagine that it works. Sometimes it works. I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to troubleshoot it. Um, so uh, something else that you can do if you have JavaScript that's changing something. Um, so this is, this is a website. Let me plug in my audio here. This is a website that I did with my daughter. It's called Silly Sounds. And it's, it's basically, you can see the code up on GitHub. And it's basically just like kind of native JavaScript to, that I um, kind of just mess around with. And I recorded WAV files, right? So you can do like something like, um, the audio's not working, but um, all right, hold on. I'm going to unplug this. Daddy. Oh, click on something here. <laughs> Hold on, where's the butt? <laughs> so she loves doing that type of stuff, right? So, <laughs> um, so let's go into here and set some breakpoints right here. So what I'm gonna do, like, like you can see when I click on this right here, it's getting big. It's getting big. So I'm gonna click on this right here. I'm and if I if I look in here. You can see that down here, it's adding a class. So where is that class coming from, right? I'm going to right click on this, go to break on, and then attribute modifications, because it's, it's modifying the attribute. So I'm going to click on this, and it's going to break. And you can see right here where I'm adding the class. 
So that's pretty cool. So right now, I'm actually in my debugger, and I can start stepping through. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the debugger uh, a little bit later. But that's, uh, that's very useful um, for, like, I don't know. Uh, so another thing is, like, if I'm moving around, say, DOM elements on page load, I can, I can like, right-click up. I can go to, like, say, the body. Here, I'm just going to refresh this. I don't know why it's not letting me drag around. But uh, I, I can, I can right-click on, say, the body, and I can... I can break on uh, attribute modification or subtree modifications. So the subtree modifications is basically everything under there. So as soon as I start scrolling, it's gonna it should break at some point. I don't know why it's not. And at that point, you can start troubleshooting stuff. Um, moving through right here, let's go to the network tab. Has anybody ever used a network tab? Cool. Has anybody learned anything yet about like some of that stuff yet? Yeah. All right, that's cool. Oh, something else that's kind of neat that uh, that I do a lot that I forgot to mention is you can edit stuff, right? So I can click in here and I can just edit the heck out of it, and I can. Why the reason that's useful is because you want to see how your CSS and your document's going to respond when your editor inserts a bunch of crap, you know, which, which happens pretty often. So you need to be able to account for that. Um, you can also move stuff around. So I can click and drag in here. And you can see I'm kind of clicking and dragging. That's kind of neat. I can also copy and paste. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to click on that. I'm going to hit Command and C to copy. Go up to the parent element. I'm going to hit Command V to paste, and you can see like I can go, and I keep on pasting that in there, you know, which is pretty neat. So, I don't know, Command C, Command V. I guess that's just kind of stacked, but um, yeah. Um, what else can we look at here? So moving on to the network tab. So the network tab tells you uh, what's going in over the network. So I'm going to disable the film strip, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I'm going to kind of explain things. Let's hit uh, Command R to reload. So at this point, you can see a whole bunch of data coming in. This data is large. This is a very large website, and I'm going to explain why in a little bit. Well, I'll explain why while everything's coming in. It's large because they're uploading PNGs instead of JPEGs. It should be about three megabytes, but they're uploading the wrong things. When, when we developed it, we actually restricted it, but uh, I guess. Oh, and you can tweet me and have the things pop up if you so desire. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to click on this, and I can actually see my HTTP headers coming in. You can see, uh, if, if you see your, like a varnish header, you can tell that it's, it's coming in from varnish. You can see your Drupal headers being added right here. You can see even the version of Drupal that's being used. Um, you can see the expires header. Where is the expires header here? Right here. So does anybody know what that expires header is? It's Dries' birthday. So like by, de by, by default, like uh, Drupal sends this expires birthday, which is uh, Dries Boitart, who is the founder of Dru Drupal's birthday. I don't know if he was born at 5 a.m., though. But that's what it is. Um, you can preview, look at cookies and stuff like that. Um, so at the bottom right here, you can see we have an even 200 requests. That's horrible, you know? So what an HTTP... Like a website is composed of like a whole bunch of different files. You have your HTML, and every time, and then you have style sheets, and you have images, and you have JavaScripts. And in a case with this website, you have JavaScripts that call other JavaScripts that call other JavaScripts. So every single one of those requires, like, in a normal scenario, requires like a round trip to the server. The server. So your browser has to reach out and say, "All right, I want this CSS file," and it parses the CSS file. And then from there, it uh, says, all right, I need this background image and stuff like that. <laughs> um, so, so each one of those is an HTTP request. Um, so you want to, <laughs> you want to uh, limit those. Right now, we have a whole bunch. You can filter these, though. So I'm going to type in domain. 
www.scifi.com. So you can see out of this, uh, this, uh, these filters right here, oh, 54 out of 200 are actually coming from sci-fi. The other uh, 150 odd ones are coming in from JavaScript. They're like all ad trackers that try to do a bunch of crap that, you know, try to analytics and all that type of stuff. Hello. Um. <laughs> all right. So uh, from here, we can, uh, we can also sort by size. So you can see these images coming in right here. These are very large images, and it is a PNG. So like this is 2.4 megabytes. If it was a JPEG, it would probably be around 700 or so kilobytes, which is still large, but <coughs> a lot less. You can filter uh, up here by your CSS, images, fonts, and all that type of stuff, which is kind of useful when you're trying to get down there. Um, what else can we do up here? Preserve log is very useful if you're doing like a bunch of redirects. You ever have like a case where like your website's redirecting to itself, redirecting, redirecting, and eventually it breaks and you, what the hell is going on? So you can check this box right here and when it reloads the page, it will preserve your, um, your check, <laughs> damn it, Drupal Camp Spain. <laughs> so you can, uh, you can check, it, it'll, it'll preserve like your HTTP uh, redirects in there. So, um, what else are we gonna do here? So you have the film strip, the, the film strip view is very useful because it shows when your first paint is. So I'm gonna refresh this again, and it's actually gonna show, uh, it'll, it'll show like a little film strip up here. As, as we're going, you can also see I have, uh, disable cache selector right now. So right now I'm just showing a sliver right here. So you can see like I I'm have that first paint in 2.12 seconds, but it's not quite set up yet. I can kind of go over and you can kind of look at that. So that's very useful. I can also throttle right here. So I can throttle down on like 3G, 4G, and all that type of stuff, which is very useful. Um, there's also ways to do CPU throttling that like emulate old phones and stuff because I might have like an iPhone, but like a lot of people might have like older phones that don't have a, you know, that have like an older CPU and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> you can look at the protocol right here. This, this column is not shown by default. You can right click in here and you can add different, um, d different uh, columns in here. The protocol one, like if it's HTTP2, which is like a newer version of HTTP, it'll actually show H2 in there. Um, what else can I show in here? Um, you can see, you, you see how there's two different values right down here, like the 29.2 and 113 kilobytes? That means that the, that the document's being gzipped, you know? So, so what that means is that when my browser reaches out to the server, it says, hey, I understand gzip. So the server will actually send a, like, basically a zip file of the website down and the browser will decompress it and it works very seamlessly. Is everybody doing good? Am I talking too fast? Okay. Cool. Um, let's move on to the next tab. Um, let's go into the console tab. Oh, look at all this crap. All right, so let's clear this out. So, um, this is a Drupal website, so we should have a Drupal object right here, right? So, and there should be like Drupal.settings. Um, you can also, you can do console, if you have a, an object or, a, um, or an array, you, you can do a con, uh, console.table, which is kind of nice, and it'll actually print out a table of your items, which is very nifty. So that's kind of cool. You can, uh, you can do uh, like these timers that you can set. Um, I don't know what the syntax is off the top of my head. Um, if you have an element right here, um, I, can, I can click on this element right here, and if I go to my console, I can hit dollar zero and hit enter, and it's, it has whatever I have selected over here, right? So you can see it does that. Now, if I select another one, say I'm, I'm clicking on nav flyout right now, so dollar zero is now nav flyout, but if I go back to dollar one, it's the one that I previously had selected. So that's kind of useful. So the dollar in this case does not mean jQuery. 
um, because jQuery operates in, was it like isolation mode? If you want to do jQuery, you just have to type in like jQuery. Like that. Um, all right, let's move. Layers. Layers is kind of new, and I, I don't even think it's, it's there by default. So right here, I can start moving around, and you can see multiple layers. I'm going to explain what those are. It's pretty nifty, but let me show you how to put it there. So in order to go to, layer, uh, uh, to add layers, you have to enable, I think, experiments. So that's Chrome. If you go to the URL, Chrome URLs right here, it will give you a whole bunch of internal URLs that you can just explore while you're on the airplane, which is what I do. So I think there is, is it experiments? Experiments, yeah, no. Uh, tool, what's that? Flags, thank you. So you go into here, and from here you go down to experiments. Uh, right here, developer tools experiments. So you can enable this, and then you have to, I believe, re restart your browser. And from there, you have to go into settings. Uh, wait, no, I need to go into developer tool settings. And there is an experiments tab here now. And there, what if you? So there's another trick here. So I'm on the experiments. If I hit the, this is not everything that's selected. If I hit the shift button six times, it will show more things. So this is weird. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Why? I don't know. So, um, <laughs> yeah. There's a bunch of weird shit in here. I, 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 so, so I go in here and I just like, I just play with stuff. So in a newer version of Chrome, there might be, uh, it, this wasn't the, um, the uh, layers was an experiment. Uh, Chrome updated, I think, like every 15 minutes. So it might not be anymore. Anyway, it's in here. You can Google it. So, uh, so, so let's talk about layers. Um, let me talk about how a browser works, right? So um, your, 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 your browser will reach out and it will say, I want this HTML. It'll bring on HTML and stuff. And it will parse this HTML. Uh, when it parses the HTML, it creates the DOM, the document object model. And it will also parse the CSS and it'll create like the CSS object model. Um, which is basically kind of like a big tree of all your CSS properties and your HTML properties and all that type of stuff. Um, from there, it combines those and forms what's called the render tree. So the render tree, um, from there, it does layout. And like when, what layout is, which is also called the reflow, um, is when it starts like figuring out where crap goes on, on, on the web page. And so that's what, that's what starts it, right? After you do layout, it starts um, painting, and, and um, it, 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 will, it will do layers. So you'll have like a layer, um, and it will paint the layer. Painting's in a very expensive operation. So painting is like when it does background colors, it makes the images and stuff like that. And then finally, what your browser will do is it will do compositing. And compositing is where it combines all the layers and like actually puts it out on your screen. So the way that I think about layers is um, like kind of like Photoshop or an image editor. And you know, how if, you know how like when Photoshop you have multiple layers and you can move them around very easily and see what's underneath of it and stuff like that? Your browser does something very similar with layers when it's moving stuff around like animating and stuff. Um, if, um, hold on. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Israel. <laughs> um, so, uh, all right. So, but if you only have one layer in Photoshop and you're trying to 
paint what's underneath of it, it's very difficult because you have to like recreate everything. You have to recalculate everything. So your browser does basically the same thing. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to figure out a way to make the browser paint less when you're doing anim animation. So I'll talk a little bit about that right now. So if you look at this website, there's a whole bunch of things going on. Right? So I'm just going to, you can look at this top bar, this latest videos, and you, you see how like there's opacity changes and the stuff's moving out, and it's all bound to the scroll event. And as I scroll down, um, you can see these hero images are doing very similar things. Um, so th that can be a very expensive operation, and I'm going to talk about how to, how to identify and mitigate that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I, I have a whole bunch of optimizations in this site, and I'm going to undo those optimizations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a universal select here, just asterisk, which will select every element in there. And I have, you can promote things to its own layer by using uh, backface visibility, um, backface visibility hidden. I'm going to set it back to its default value, which is visible, but I'm going to just use initial right here. So right now, all the optimizations are removed, and you know, so it's more of a jankier experience. Have you ever been to, like, you, you guys know what a parallax website is, right? When crap's moving around. Have you ever been to a parallax website and you start scrolling, and it's like, <laughs> like that? Like that's like very janky, and that's something that you don't want. And a lot of times, that's because they're animating the background image. When you animate, like the, say, like the position of the background image, it forces repaints. When you start animating stuff around, there's only a couple things that you really want to animate. You want to animate transforms, CSS transforms. So that's like translate Y, translate X, um, scaling and stuff like that. Um, you, it's also very cheap to, to animate um, opacity. So, so those are good. But what you also want to do is you want to promote the stuff to its own layer because your browser doesn't always know to do that. So we can check. I'm going to hit the escape button to open up like the settings tray down here. And by default, these are all kind of not here. So you have to click right here, and then you have to go down to rendering. And so I'm going to check this box for paint flashing. And what this will do is, um, as the browser paints, it's going to start highlighting crap green. So as I scroll down right here, this whole thing is green. Hold on. Maybe, there we go. So as, I, as I'm scrolling, everything's green, and that's bad. They call that a paint storm, because like, what's happening is stuff's moving up here and over there, and it joins it, and it tries to optimize it, and it's horrible, right? So if I go to the Layers tab right now, I'm going to see, like, I'm probably just, I should see just one big layer. Yeah, you can see right here, this is one layer. Right? Oh, yeah, you see that middle thing in there? That's, that's the advertisement, because iframes are, by default, new layers. So, um, so this is bad right here. We identified a problem by checking this paint flashing uh, box right here. So what I'm going to do is everything that I animate, I'm going to apply a CSS property for. So there's a couple CSS properties you can use. You can use, the correct one to use is called will change, will dash change. When, when I did this website, that wasn't well supported, so I was using backface visibility hidden. And you can also use like, uh, was it? I, I think like a translate Z thing too. All right. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to go back to um, I'm going to uncheck. So I have I should have um, I should be able to find my deoptimization somewhere in here. Right here. So right here I have this set to initial. So now I'm going to uncheck that and. So what's going to happen is my default uh, proper, the properties that I put in there, back, backspace visibility hidden are there. So let's look at the layers right now. So you can see now there's a crap load more layers in here. So this is, you, you can tell this is kind of starting to look a little bit normal, well, a little bit crazy because everything animates. So, um, so let's, uh, let me get out of this because this is a very slow pain. All right, so I'm going to, I'm gonna, all right, I still have paint flashing right here. So now, as I scroll, I should see very little paint flashing. So you see that? So every once in a while, you see like some painting that goes on, but there's no paint flashing, or there's very little paint flashing. So that is good. And, and once again, the reason that is is like painting is a very expensive operation. It's done on your computer's CPU. 
Compositing, which is when you're combining the layers, is done on your computer's GPU, which for whatever computer science reason is much faster. There's a couple other cool options in here. Show your layer border. So this is what we were looking at before. Um, so this is good. So sometimes you see these blue layer borders in here. I don't know what those are. But the orange ones are the ones that you want to uh, pay attention to. I haven't found a good use for visu visualizing the layer borders, except for it's kind of cool and it gives you an idea on how the browser works. You have your FPS meter right here. So FPS stands for frames per second. So in an ideal situation, I am going to operate at 60 frames per second. And, and that's like super fast, super smooth scrolling. Once your frames per second goes b below about 30, you can start to notice it. Man. So these tweets are covered up. So you can see like my frames per second right now is pretty good. And I tell you what, like just out of curiosity, let's go ahead and recheck that right now and see if the frames per second is a lot lower. Yeah, so you can see my frames per second up there is around 16, 10. Undo this and hopefully faster. Yeah, it's much faster now. So you can see it's like 40 and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool, right? Scrolling performance issues. I've never like really had a good use for this or, or found anything. So if anybody knows more about that, tell me. So there's a couple other options in here. You can, uh, you can uh, do your network conditions here, which is pretty interesting. So you can uh, say your website's offline if you want to uh, you know, pretend that you're in a tunnel um, or that you have crappy cell phone service or great cell phone service. You can, um, you can uh, spoof the uh, user agent if you're doing like any type of uh, client-side or server-side uh, browser detection. Um, what else can we do here? Um, rendering sensors. Oh, this, this is pretty interesting. So you can actually uh, spoof your CS or your um, your location for your uh, like for the GPS. You know where you have that little pop-up that says "allowed to allow this website to know your location." So you can hit, you can say, "I want to be in Shanghai," and it will think you're in Shanghai. Of course, they can still do like IP-based lookup and stuff, but that's kind of interesting. You can spoof orientation right here uh, if you're playing around with that type of stuff. Um, what else could we do? I think there's a way in. Oh yeah, right here. So you can you can emulate print right there. Like so, if you have a website that for whatever reason you need to have a print style sheet, you can style it by checking that box right there for emulate CSS media. So that's that can be very useful. Um, how am I doing on time? Got we have like 30 minutes ish. Um, remote devices, animations. I haven't played around with animations yet. Um, I don't know if I do. I have any animations here. Let's go to another website where I have animations. We'll see how lo that looks. So I'm a, I'm an organizer for Florida Drupal Camp also, and you guys are all officially invited. We have animations up here. So let me get somewhere where there's not a video. So, so you can see I have these little bubbles floating around up here. So I'm going to go to animations. I'm going to select one of these guys here. Header bubble. So I guess that's animating also. Um, Anyway, it exists. That's what I'm teaching you. I don't know exactly how it works yet because I haven't played with it. So hopefully that helps out someone. Um, all right, let's go to um, JavaScript debugging. JavaScript debugging is a lot of fun, I think, because um, so I'm, I'm, I'm like most of the work that I do, like the project even that I'm still on, is, is Drupal 7, and I'm doing a lot of jQuery. So I'm trying, as best I can, to learn modern JavaScript, you know, learn a lot of, um, like, uh, vanilla JavaScript, which is, like, base JavaScript. I'm trying to learn, like, of course, modern-day frameworks like React and, um, I don't know, Vue and cool stuff like that. So uh, one of the ways that I found 
to learn this, to learn that like really, really good, is by learning the tools, learning how to debug it properly. Who here uh, uses the built-in debugger for JavaScript? A couple. Who here wants to learn it? If no one raises their hand, I'm going to skip it. I said, who here wants to learn how to debug JavaScript? Got one. All right, couple. All right, two. This is for you. I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> So, uh, and, and hopefully every, everyone else will, will uh, get a little bit of, of uh, uh, something out of this too. So, what I can do, yeah, still got audio, I'm going to stop my audio here. Um, so, basically what you're going to do is you're going to, if you click in here, you can um, set what's called a breakpoint. And your breakpoint is, when I reload this, it's going to stop in execution right here, right, right where I, I tell it to stop. So at this point, I can actually start clicking this uh, step over button and start uh, looking at my different variables. So I can see what this variable right here is over here. So you can see that in this case I'm going the drum selector is set to div.key.ka, which is um, whatever that selector is right there. Um, I can, um, so at this point, I can start stepping over. I can hit the play button, and it will stop at the next breakpoint. So um, in this case, I'm in a for loop right here. So the for loop will, uh, of course, break multiple times. It's going to break once for each. So, but what I can do is, if, like right now, I can say, um, so what is keys right here? Key 66. So what I can do is I can, I can edit this breakpoint. Like if I'm, if I'm in a for loop and I want to only stop it when something happens, I can just say, like, if key equals 66. And when I re reload here, it should only break once right here. Yeah, so it's key is 66. So that's kind of useful when you're, when you're going through, um, like, obviously, a for loop and you're iterating over an array or something similar to that. Um, what's interesting is, like, a, so let's look on the, uh, on the on the right-hand side right here, you can select uh, a watch statement right here. So at this point, I can add in stuff like key. And, I can, and, and as, as I, as I uh, what do you call it, uh, step through my program, I can see how that variable changes or how that array changes or how the object changes and stuff like that. And you can watch the scope, make sure that your variable is in scope. Um, you can always find out what this is. You know, is everybody like sometimes have trouble finding out what this is? It'll just tell you right here, right now. This is set to window. Um, it uh, it'll show like obviously your local scope. If you have, if you're doing like a closure, like a function within a function, it will show you that scope in here too, which is very useful. Um, XHR breakpoint. So this is like any type of AJAX stuff. XHR is XML HTTP request. So I can uh, check this box right here. And if I'm doing any type of AJAX, it will break on that. Um, a DOM breakpoint is um, what I was setting earlier when I right clicked on the element and select break on this. Um, and you can also select, uh, do specific breakpoints on any type of event listeners. So I can select like on key down or key press and stuff like that right here which is kind of useful. So um, I can hit the escape button and go to the console right here, and I can actually type in and, and, and see what's happening down here, you know, and I can uh, edit this. Um, what's useful if I'm editing the JavaScript directly, um, like especially within Drupal, if you have like a whole bunch of JavaScript files, and I don't want to, you know, browse through like, I don't know, a million files over here, you know. I might be in this. I, I don't want to have to browse through and find the exact file. What I can do is I can edit my file, and I can just type in debugger. And what will happen when I set debugger is it will, it will break right, 
right there. So like if I'm if I do, if I don't have any breakpoints over here, it it will it will still break and it'll open up uh, the JavaScript file to that point, which is very useful. Um, all right, pantalones. I do have pantalones. Um, all right. Learning, maybe? Iffy? Need some feedback? Good? All right. Good, 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 good. Timeline tab is my favorite. I have a favorite Chrome tab. It's the timeline tab. Let me show it to you. So I'm going to go to timeline, and I am going to hit the record button up here. And I'm going to start scrolling around and doing a bunch of crap, right? Then I'm going to hit stop. And while this loads, I'm going to... You guys get to listen to me slurp. So, this is a bunch of cool stuff right here, right? It looks all fancy, and you can do like cool stuff that makes you look like you're hacking by going like, and then like that, and all that crap. So, but let's kind of, let's, let's take a look. So this is like really great at um, performance, uh, performance profiling. So especially like runtime performance profiling and, um, and when I say runtime, like how your web page is uh, doing after you initially load it. So I can, let's see, I can click here and move around. And so there's a couple things that are happening right here. Like number one, I have this preview here, so it shows me what I, where I am, which is very useful. The green up here shows my frames per second. Remember how I talked about frames per second and how fast your website seems to be responding? You want that to obviously be very high. Um, these little red dots up here are, are saying um, that it's you, there's a problem right at this point. So you can, we can maybe uh, get over here and look at it. So you can, uh, we can start to look over here. Let me. And so this, this right down here is called um, a flame chart. And you can kind of click on here and, and look to see what's going on. So you can see on the, I have an event, I have a scroll event and it's calling something. So I can actually click into this right here and it will, it will open up, I guess, wherever is. So this is, looks like it's almost like the, uh, the Drupal.js stuff where it's running your behaviors. Um, where was I, timeline? Let's kind of go down, right here. Uh, so here, once again, we have some um, minified and probably uglified JavaScript. I can un uglify it and kind of look down and, and figure stuff out. Um, oh, what's also useful, hold on, let me go back. So you see how over in this area there's a little gutter, like, like this area right over here? So as I scroll down, hopefully, let's see if we can find some, you'll see some uh, numbers in here. And what these numbers are is that's how long it takes that to execute. So, so that's like very powerful. Like if your JavaScript's going slow, you can potentially take a look at it and uh, figure out what line is going wrong and all that type of stuff. There's a bunch of stuff in here that's not executing. Um, so that's kind of neat. So I can also look at, uh, there should be like, I should be able to look at paint painting elements in here. So this, this um, tab almost always changes in each version of Chrome. They're constantly improving it. Um, like for example, the last time I actually checked, the screenshots were not in this tab. Um, so there should be a way to look at the paints. All right, so here we go, we've got raster. So let's see what shows up in here, no, nope, GPU. So I guess this is uh, all the compositing. Um, just out of curiosity, I'm going to go back in here and do the uh, do undo my optimizations and rerun this, and we'll see what happens.
timeline, clear it. Someday it will load. So what, what I'm hoping to see here is number one, the frames per second should be a lot lower because I undid my optimizations. And uh, secondly, um, all right, so, yeah, so you can see my frames per second do look a little bit lower, I think. Um, and so I see like some more raster stuff here. I'm guessing this is the same as painting. Uh, right here, so you can see some paintings right here. Um, updating layer tree, so the layer trees is like when it's do, or when it's doing that, that's, uh, that's doing uh, any type of like reflow or layout, and typically that's a bad thing that you want to see there. I don't know what's going on. Um, and yeah, so let's. I, I think this is pretty good. It'll give you maybe an idea of the timeline tab. Um, I don't use the application security or uh, audits tab. I, I do uh, frequently look at the cookies within the application tab, actually. Um, a note with this is if you're, if you're setting and resetting cookies, you do need to like get out of this and go back into it because it won't automatically update. Um, so your w Chrome developer tools can also do limited mobile emulation. So you can chat, you can hit this little mobile button up here and I can say I want this to be an iPhone 6 and I'm going to reload because it's looking pretty bad. Am I zoomed in? Let me uh, command zero. Yeah, there we go. So this is what my website would look on an iPhone 6, kind of. So the caveat of this is it does not emulate the rendering of, of the iPhone 6, but it does emulate the size of it, and um, it also sends the, uh, your user agent headers, which means that it identifies itself to the server as an iPhone 6 if you're doing something like that. Uh, you can switch orientation with this little uh, American football thing up here. Um, and you can throttle from here. And you can set your CPU throttles up here too. Uh, maybe. I don't know why the CPU throttle is not there, but. Um, <coughs> uh, there's MIDI queries up here. We'll show the various MIDI queries and you can kind of click in, like if you set this to responsive you can kind of click at these multiple media queries and jump around very quickly. I don't use that too often. I do use this little feature because it's kind of nice right there just to kind of uh, make it bigger and smaller. Um, you can see my cursor right here is emulating a touch point like a, like a thick cursor, it's not a mouse. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to think what else I missed to go over here. Does anybody have any questions while I'm thinking? Um, I probably could quit the browser or quit Twitter. I don't know. Is that bugging you? Okay. <laughs> oh, spirit. Um, Yeah, so I guess that's a tada then. I, I don't think I have anything else that I can, I'm, I'm sure like right after this I'm gonna think of something like, oh shit, I should've said this. But uh, yeah, so thank you.